Hey guys, in this video I want to talk about brownouts and flips of death with uh, these micro drones that we've been flying lately. And I know there's a lot of misconceptions and just a lot of false information out there. I want to clear it up because I do know what's causing uh, at least some of these, not all of these, but per, for the most part I, I know what's causing a lot of these problems. And I can, I can tell you what kind of solutions I've come up with. Now this is the um, Kenny 110. I haven't put the review video out for this yet, but uh, I'll have it out in a few days and this flies pretty good. I um, built this with an Omnibus F3 20x20 board, which has a built-in PDB. And I, I used this because I wanted to use these DOS 12 amp ESCs. Uh, and I built it originally uh, in a certain way to demonstrate what a brownout is and what it looks like. So brownouts usually are either the receiver failing and, and uh, causing a failsafe or your camera cutting out. So you get like static or it goes to black or the camera shuts off, you get no transmission whatsoever. So those are two ways that you can get a brownout. Um, you can also get a brownout where the flight controller resets and you just crash basically, you just fall out of the sky, it disarms and just, just, just falls out of the sky. And then there's the flip of death where uh, basically you get an ESC desync and then um, the other motors try and compensate and then it just flips over and just goes crazy and it crashes. So for me, from what I found out, the flips of death are pretty, um, well, those are pretty well known. Basically, if you have a battery that's really weak and you have a power system that's drawing a lot of amps, so I know that a lot, of, a lot of motors these days are getting bigger, more powerful, drawing more power. If you have a battery that can't supply that power to the ESCs, the ESCs reset, and you get it. Well, one of the ESCs is reset. Then you get, then you get a desync, and then it'll, it'll do the flip of death. Um, the other way that can happen is that you can, you can have a good battery, but the wrong connector with a JST connector can't. The JST connector is a bottleneck and can't supply enough amps to the ESCs and the motors are demanding and then the ESCs will reset when there's basically not enough power. This can also happen at towards the end of the battery um, when uh, you've flown for like two or three minutes and the voltage is sagged to the point where it can't supply any more power and then uh, the ESCs desync and then you get a flip of death. So those are the different ways you can get that and mainly those, those are caused by too much power draw from these bigger and powerful motors from the ESCs and the motors and our battery technology not able to keep up with um, the supply of, or the demand of power. They can't supply the power for the demand that's being being asked. For brownouts, as I mentioned, uh, you, get, you get three different things that can happen. You get the flight controller resetting, you can get your receiver to fail safe, or you get your camera to cut out. The reason that that's happening is uh, kind of a different reason. It's not because there's too much power drop from the motors. It's because there's an onboard regulator on these flight controllers, uh, or a BEC, and that usually um, takes the LiPo voltage, you know, 2S or 3S in some cases, or maybe even 4S, and then down, uh, down converts it to 5 volts for use by the flight controller and supplies it to the receiver and to the camera. So if that BEC is too weak, so for example this uh, F3 Omnibus has a 1 amp BEC in there, you know, one amp is probably not enough to supply current to your video transmitter all in one camera, plus to your receiver, plus all the stuff that's going on on your flight controller, including an OSD. All that stuff draws power and current. And uh, even this one here is only a 25 milliwatts uh, FX 798T. If you put a 200 milliwatt on here, it's going to drive more power. There's going to be more power demands on that voltage regulator, and uh, it's going to be more likely to cause a brownout. And so what I did was I flew it. Um, just like this without a, uh, any additional help and I'll explain the help in a second here and I, I got a brownout on the camera and I'll, you know, I'll show you in the corner here what that video looks like basically it's basically the video just cuts out when you do a punch out so what happens is uh, power is being demanded by the motors it comes from the battery and there's a voltage sag in the battery and the, the voltage regulator can't keep up with the voltage sag it goes below 5 volts and then it can't supply enough current and voltage to your receiver or your camera. Um, in my case, I'm using a FlySky receiver, it's FS82. That, ha that doesn't have much issues in terms of um, brownouts because the vo I think the voltage range is pretty big on this one. 
and I wasn't having any issues there. If you, if you switch to like the Flysky FS8S, this one seems to have a lot of brownout issues, at least a lot of people that I've uh, found out from the internet. Uh, if the voltage sags too much, this one will, will fail safe. I haven't had too many issues with that because um, I generally put these on setups where the voltage regulator won't brown out. So it's just uh, if you have that problem, they should check your setup and make sure that your BEC is providing enough voltage and current. Um, I know some of these uh, boards, like the ones from HGLRC, the XJ, XJB series, they have bigger voltage regulators, like 3 amps. I know the Pico BLX has a 3 amp BEC. I've never had any brownout issues with those uh, boards with the larger BEC. And so that's something you should check and make sure that your uh, whatever board you have, and if you have any issues, check your voltage regulator. How, how much current can it output? And I know that you know even on these Omnibus F3s, the voltage regulators can vary. I've I've seen some boards where they can take this setup here and it'll be totally fine. The voltage regulator is able to supply the current, and then in others where it's not able to. So even though they advertise one app, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're getting one app. So it's something you should keep in mind. So after I did the little demo where I browned out the camera, the way I fixed this was I added a, another a voltage regulator and specifically just for the camera. So um, it's probably not going to be too visible here in this lighting. Okay, now you can see it. So right here is a micro voltage regulator. It's an additional voltage regulator that's going to the camera only. And that, that is connected directly to the battery leads here. And uh, this is the uh, the micro BEC that I'm using. It's a 5 volt, uh, 500 milliamp hour voltage regulator. And it's supposed to down convert 2 to 4 us to 5 volts. And that's what's in there. So it's actually wrapped in heat shrink. And that's going to the camera. And so now the camera is not drawing uh, additional current from the onboard uh, voltage regulator on the flight controller. It's only supplying voltage and current to the flight controller and the receiver. And in this setup, I've never experienced any uh, brownouts, fail safes, or any issues whatsoever. So the solution for brownouts is first check your board, make sure that your, your board can supply the, the, the amount of current that's being demanded by all your components. And if you're flying one of these uh, boards with a one amp uh, BEC, there's a lot of them out there, and probably a lot of them have brownout issues. Then your solution is to add one of these voltage regulators, and I would say um, you put it on the camera. Uh, it's going to provide additional filtering for the power for the camera, and uh, the camera usually draws the most power, especially if you guys are running 200 milliwatts. That's going to draw a lot more power, so I, I would recommend putting that on the camera instead of the receiver. The receiver doesn't really draw that much power. so. Putting a receiver on the 1 amp EC for the flight controller should be totally fine. And that's my recommendation for setting up this way. If you're getting flips of death, check your battery connector and check your battery. Make sure you have a good battery. And I, have a, I know I'm still working on the uh, 2S LiPo Roundup and I'm sorry it's taking so long. I've just got so many batteries to go through and I'm testing. And uh, I will give you that Roundup and tell you which batteries are good. But if you're having issues with flips to death, typically it's your connector or it's the battery. Your battery's no good or you're using a JST when you should be using an XT30. So those are, those are my recommendations for fixing brownouts and flips of death. If you guys know of uh, something that I've missed here that maybe I, 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 there's other uh, potential, I guess, issues or causes for brownouts and flips of, death, flips of death that I haven't covered here, let me know in the comments below and maybe I'll cover that up in a, uh, a future video follow-up video. But these are the ones that I found and uh, the solution for fixing the brownouts for me has been getting these little micro BECs for the weaker flight controllers and that seems to have fixed all the problems for me. Anyway guys, hope you found this video helpful. Let me know if you guys have any questions and I will talk to you guys in the next one.